Let's continue reading from my book, A Thousand Sayings, To Hear You Saw. This is how I was saved by faith. This is my testimony. Today, we are going to see how people doubt God in all ways. Doubting God? God in all ways. Why people doubt God? People doubt God without knowing. Whether it comes to hard times. People doubt God in hard times. People doubt God's promises. People doubt God's love. People doubt God's goodness. And people doubt even God's existence. People have doubts about God. Why is that? Right. Let's see. When you are in hard time, God will give you a sign. God will give you a sign. Always God gives a sign. But people don't realize or do not understand because they don't obey that voice from within. God will give a sign. God gives a sign all the time. But very few people understand this because it takes time to pass. It takes time So, this is where people lose hope, start doubting God. Does God exist? If God exists, why am I going through this or that? Why am I suffering? People start questioning God. This is when people lose hope and, of course, they don't going to find out what the sign was about. This is why most people do not understand. This is when you will hear people questioning the following questions. Number one, why God make me or cause me suffer? If God is good, why do we suffer? Why do I have to suffer? Well, God doesn't make you suffer. You make yourself suffer. I make myself suffer. Why? Because when you turn your back to God and God has given you a sign, you saw that, but because of lack of knowledge, because of lack of understanding, you are not going to obey the way of God. In that case, you will turn your back to God and that's when you face tough times and when you suffer, you turn to God and say, God, why am I suffering? Because you caused that to yourself. That's what happened. Right? So God does not cause you suffer in any ways because God wants everyone happy, but not everyone wants to listen to God. This is the case. Right? Second question. If the church has the truth, why is the church full of hypocrites? So, why the church is full of hypocrites? People who are not honest. Hypocrites. Right. This is because not everyone who goes to church who says love God mean it. People can say but from deep with their heart they don't mean it. So many examples how can you gossip about someone and at the same time call yourself a believer? 
saying you love God. You cannot love God if you gossip, if you do harm to others. This is why if someone goes to church, does not call for that person a righteous one. A righteous person is the one who will put in action what he or she preaches or what is the principles of God, the will of God. This is the one you can start question when you see this and that person, if he is hypocrite, not honest, in that case you can question. But don't say that everyone who goes to church is righteous. No. People go to church for so many, many reasons. But pretenders also do exist. We know that. The next question is about science and God. Having faith in God. Can we trust both? So you will hear some people say science is king. But on the other hand, we know having faith in God is key. Faith is key. Why? Because science is temporary. Science, to me at least, means failure. We have seen that. I will speak about it in a while. To me, science is failure. But faith in God is instant. What do I mean? Because what you hear from God, God gives you a sign, you know it comes from the Holy Spirit, my friend. Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit will warn you and show you things, but again, very few will see them. But science, let's take the example of 2019. 2019, people try science, but later on, some of them, if not all of them, they found out it was the lie. It was what we call a hoax. But God, if God gives you a message, it takes time. You see, the devil used science to fool people. But the righteous people of God use God's faith to heal people. That's why we are talking about how I was healed by faith. This is a testimony so that you can take this as a message that will help you overcome anything that you are going through right now. You see, you cannot trust both science and God. Either you are for science or you are for God because we know the devil used science to fool people and God used faith to strengthen his people. If you have faith in God, you trust and wait and wait long enough no matter what comes your way, you will overcome. So here is the last but not the least. Why we don't have to doubt God. Experience. We go through so many things. Experience. So our experience does not change God's evidence. So God's evidence is not changed by our experience. So we go through many, many things because we have what we call expectations. So we have expectations. So something we expect to happen fast, right now, right here, and if that thing does not happen as we wish, that's when we start doubting God, say, oh God, you told me this or that, it's not coming to pass. Check. That guy has this, that guy has that. But what we forget is that everybody has own experience. Wait and wait. You don't have anything to prove God. What you have to do is being obedient and wait enough, a little bit longer, and wait until your promises come to pass. The secret is being faithful and wait patient, obedient, and no matter how long
long time to take, it's going to come to pass. If I look back, when I was writing this book, I was in so-called tough time. I wrote this, not only this book, two, three, four, five, six books. Had I lost my mind and gave up on my own self, I would have gone long ago. But I kept the faith. That's why this is my testimony. How I was set by faith, the voice of God told me to put in a book and I obey. Here we are. And the rest is a testimony. So, you may ask, how do I overcome doubting God? How do you overcome your doubts about God's ways? Why? Here's the wisdom. Don't talk to the devil. Speak to the devil. So if you talk to the devil, is when you hear that doubting voice coming to you, tell him what you should be doing, and of course, you can have that kind of conversation and end up being convinced and confused. That's when you are talking to the devil. So now you have to speak to the devil to get behind you, not this behind, but get away from you. That's how you tell the devil, no, no matter what you tell me, I know I have a promise from God. God told me this, I have to wait. I have the courage, I have the will, I have the power to remain faithful to God. Remain faithful to God because you have to create this kind of contract between you and God, not between you and people. Because people will promise you so many things and those things will not come to pass. But what God promised you to come to pass, it will come to pass no matter how long time it will take. This is a kind of contract. A contract. You have to see it as a contract between you and your creator. This is how I saw it. This is what was my experience because when the voice of God came to me, I said to myself, this is divine. I have to obey. I have to wait and wait and wait and wait because I heard that voice myself. And guess what? Here we are. I wait long enough and then the testimony, the rest no matter what you think or how you feel, this is a testimony and this is an example on how you can overcome your doubts. Overcome your doubts? Right now, right here, it's possible. You just have to be faithful. I know it's hard. It's tough. It does not happen overnight, but with time, you shall overcome. Thank you very much for watching. May God bless you. Sharon, Sharon, Sharon.